internet's darkest corners part two by the homie nick crawley what's good how you day going morning evening night whenever you watch this video not gonna talk your ears off don't have a long intro we're just gonna go ahead and see what kind of evil issues upon us on the internet yo go check out the original video link will be in the description below but let's go i ain't even trying to rush you i just ain't got nothing to talk about let's go to it or it can draw conclusions it's a personal computer from Apple, and it's as easy to use as this. He has sprayed house and garden. But by killing. taking the proper precautions, you can get the job done That's safely. Ah! 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 Okay, you okay to drive? Yeah, I'm fine. Chapter 1, pull it over. There was no way to defend herself. She knew she had been caught. As in the hours prior to getting behind the wheel of her car, 21-year-old Gianna Webb had consumed far too many drinks, causing her driving to become uncontrollable and erratic. And after reaching speeds well over 100 miles per hour and driving right past a pair of state troopers, Gianna was now pulled over on the I-95 in South Philadelphia. There, she would be approached by officers Martin Mack and Brandon Siska as she sat one breathalyzer away from facing harsh legal action for her poor decision. But just as the officers began conversing with the intoxicated woman, their attention would soon be called elsewhere, as an urgent call was made to their radio, alerting them that a pedestrian had been wandering by foot on that very highway just a few miles ahead. Unaware at this point that Gianna was in fact inebriated, and assuming that the pedestrian was a far more pressing concern, the officer sprang into action and sped away into the night, allowing Damn, Gianna to leave so freely. Pedestrian, I mean, I get it's the highway, but a pedestrian is more important than someone doing a hundred plus on the highway? Wow. Let me guess. I'm gonna see what's gonna happen. Let me guess. Inebriated, though. and assuming that the pedestrian was a far more pressing concern, the officer sprang into action and sped away into the night, allowing Gianna to leave freely and breathe the ultimate sigh of relief. Clearly, she had dodged a bullet, but rather than being thankful that she had avoided certain and serious legal ramifications, the incident instead seemed to inflate her ego, mm, as she immediately took to Twitter, still parked on the side of the road, writing in a braggadocious manner, Why the cop pull me and he say I'm doing 110 and a 50? As strange of a response as this may have been, to that narrowly rhetorical. avoiding a life-changing arrest, this was surprisingly on brand for Gianna, as between incessant posting about how much she loves to drink, she would also tweet, If you ask me, I'm the best drunk driver ever. This was clearly a pattern for Gianna, a normalized action, as she believed that she was fully capable of driving drunk, and also that she was actually good at it, which is not only incredibly frightening, yeah. but also far from the truth. Immediately after tweeting this message out, Gianna would again speed off into the night, having gotten away with her drunk driving once more. Though ironically, just minutes later, she would again approach those very same officers that had just pulled her over, as well as that very pedestrian they were trying to help. Only this time, there was a problem. She was going far too fast, and was impaired was to the, the point that her reaction time was severely delayed. She quickly began to swerve out of control, and by that point, there was no stopping. And in an instant, Gianna would careen her vehicle directly into officers Martin Mack and Brandon Siska, as well as that same pedestrian they were attempting to save, striking all three at unimaginable speeds. Damn. As the car finally came to a stop, all three of the men lay motionless on the pavement. None of them were alive with the only survivor of the incident being Gianna, the so best drunk work. driver ever. If you don't stop your friend from drinking and driving, you're as good as dead. We got to add real quick. I'm going to go ahead and let it play so Nick Crowley can get his uh, revenue. But damn, that's crazy how it all came back around. Like the entire time I was like, if we would have just took action the first time, I don't, I don't know why they didn't see 110 and a 50 was not. I of the video back on. It was some uh, short ads. But how did they not see 110 and a 50 was dangerous? And the, the crazy thing is, so the pedestrian that they were looking for, so, oh, okay, so they finally found them. I was about to say, wait, why are they hanging out again? But they're not hanging out. They couldn't, I take it, I forgot. They didn't find them the first time. So this time, I take it, they found them, right? So boom. So I was like, oh, we finally found this pedestrian. You're, you're still a pedestrian? You're a 
like, what the fuck is going on on this highway? But that's beside the point. All because your job was not done, you lost your life. That is freaking crazy, man. Oh, shit. Drinking and driving. You're as good as dead. March 30th, 2017, a disturbing video begins circulating across Twitter she showing a woman her. hanging out of a window, clinging on for dear life with one hand. Below her was seven stories of nothing leading to concrete ground and metal, certain death for anyone unfortunate enough to fall from that height. Understandably, the woman is crying and begging to be saved, yelling over and over again to hold me, hold me. But what makes this story especially disturbing is the commentary in the background heard in response to these pleas. As the woman desperately clings to the window, another woman stands inches away, holding her phone and recording the ordeal, as she calmly responds to the cries for help by saying, Oh crazy, come back. It's a chilling line knowing that one woman was clearly powerless and in dire need of help, while the other woman just stands behind the camera, seeming completely unfazed by the gravity of the situation, mm -hmm. waiting for tragedy to strike. And that's exactly what would happen, Damn. as the lady soon loses her grip, causing her to plummet to the ground below. Damn! She couldn't hold on. Moments later, the camera shit. shows the woman as she lays there, deathly still, seven stories below. It was an extremely shocking video, and one that immediately raised questions as to what exactly had led to this scenario, with millions viewing the video and sharing it across Twitter in a desperate search for answers as the clip offered nothing else in the way of context. Initially, it was believed and even reported that the woman had done this as a way of taking her own life, and the woman behind the camera seemingly didn't believe that she would go through with it. Perhaps just not understanding that by that point, there was literally nothing the hanging woman could have done to pull herself back up. And due to so this being was, the most uh, prominent initial theory, many would walk away on, from this video. Hold on, nigga, you talking too much. But no, uh, <laughs> dang, man, I keep asking y'all questions like it's live. But what was occupying her other hand? Because I was, I was hoping it was not a, when, when, I was hoping not that, whatever, because I don't know why she dressed, she's just like a mom. So I was like, man, what's going on here? And then I ain't gonna lie, at one point I was thinking like, what if this person kept going over and doing that or playing around, or I don't know, was attempting it, but kept coming back because the woman's the other person the person behind the camera response did throw me off oh crazy come come back i would say that somebody saying like dog stop playing so much come back as if like i'm implying like yo this person's been doing this shit all day or they keep doing this or they've been i don't know man but then maybe that was a real one i ah but what was in the other hand? Because I was wondering, like, why is she not using the other hand to grab on? Like That the woman had done this as a way of taking her own life, and the woman behind the camera seemingly didn't believe that she would go through with it, perhaps just not understanding that by that point, there was literally nothing the hanging woman could have done yeah, to pull herself back over. up. And due to this being the most prominent initial theory, the many would walk away from this video. Ooh, made, huh? So was something stolen from that room? Oh shit. And due to this being the most prominent initial theory, many would walk away from this video believing that it was sadly yet another tragic suicide. However, there was something that still didn't sit right about this clip, as the cold, callous way that the woman off screen had spoken to this struggling it woman nice just line, comes like. across as so off putting, leading some to believe that there had to be more to this story, a notion that would turn out to be correct. Mm. Upon the release of a series of local articles from Kuwait, it would be revealed that this hanging woman's name was actually Adish Sadiq, and what we are witnessing in this video actually isn't an attempted suicide, but rather an attempted murder. Mm. At the time, Adish had moved from her home in Ethiopia to quote unquote work as a maid in Kuwait, and I say this because it would later be revealed that Adish had essentially been a slave to her employer. She had only been working for this particular boss for three days, but during this time she had been held captive and was forbidden from leaving the building, Damn. making Adish essentially a prisoner or a slave, which sadly is all too common of an occurrence in the area due to something called the Kafala system, which is way too complicated to fully die. 
Let me see if I can do it. Area due to something called Lebanon's restrictive and exploitative ka kafala sponsorship system traps tens of thousands of migrant domestic workers in highly abusive conditions amounting at worst to modern slavery. The law fails to protect the workers and the establishment has no interest in changing the current system. I'm telling these motherfuckers, boy, I love being, I love living in America. Stop and was forbidden from leaving the building, making Adish essentially a prisoner or a slave, which sadly is all too common of an occurrence in the area due to something called the <clears throat> kafala system, which is way too complicated to fully dive into here. But on this particular day, Adish finally had enough, and she approached her boss telling her that she was quitting while demanding to be released. Though it wasn't quite so that, that simple, the only way and her out. boss did not take kindly to this request. In response, Adish would be grabbed and thrown inside of the bathroom of what appears to be some sort of apartment complex, with the room being located near the very top of the building. Once inside, her boss, a woman who to my knowledge has not been publicly named, would lock the door and begin shouting at Adish and proclaiming that she was going to kill her and that no one would ever find out or even care yeah, for I that I was map. just about to say, or even care. I hate to tell you, legit in prison, while free a modern day slave we heard the story legit being honest dog you think the police is going to come looking like hey we heard so-and-so was missing oh we're looking for so, -and -so. no rest in peace the top of the building Damn. once inside her boss a woman who to my knowledge has not been publicly named would lock the door and begin shouting at adish and proclaiming that she was going to kill her and that no one would ever find out or even care for that matter. Which was most certainly true given the unbalanced power dynamic in the area between employers and foreign workers. And knowing that the woman was in fact serious with her threats and that if she were killed in that bathroom, no one would have known. Adish made the split second decision to try and escape out the window despite knowing that she would most likely not survive the fall. But at least this way, as slim as it may seem, she had a chance. Going out that window was purely an act. Know. I think you got more of a chance fighting dog. Seem, she had a chance. Going out that window was purely an act of desperation, but to Adish, it was the only way. If that's and so, she clambered out the window out. and prepared to plummet to the ground below. But not before her boss pulled out her cell phone to record the woman's final moments, while openly mocking her as she fell to the ground below. This explains the lack of assistance that the camera woman offered, and why she seemed to have such a smug attitude towards the helpless woman. Because she didn't care if Adish died, her life was meaningless to her if she wasn't her slave. And to make this employer's behavior even more jarring, she would immediately upload the video to her very own Snapchat, where it would then be re-recorded and shared across the web. And when questioned about what exactly had happened inside that bathroom, it was this employer that began the lie that Adish was merely trying to take her own life. She had formulated this entire rumor to essentially absolve herself from any responsibility, and it's almost certain that she would have gotten away with this too, had it not been for the fact that Adish Uplo survived. Whoa. Upon falling to the ground below, Adish's I mean, fall would be broken. You know what we talked about in the Mr. Baller video in this situation? Look, we ain't gonna go back there, but damn. I, I hope it all played out be better for her. I really do. Had it not been for the fact that Adish survived. Damn. Upon falling to the ground below, Adish's fall would be broken by a metal awning, which more than likely saved her life, as miraculously she was able to physically walk away from the scene with merely a broken arm and a few other non-life-threatening injuries. She'd even go on to give an interview inside the hospital just a few days later, where she would reveal the truth behind this shocking video, with this testimony leading to the arrest of her employer, who would mm. ultimately receive just a few months of jail yeah, time. You know but still, time. it's crazy to me just how differently this story could have ended, and probably should have ended, as imagine if this video had never been recorded, and imagine if Adish hadn't survived that fall. I mean, the truth would have literally never been known, which is such a scary and and utterly depressing thoughts. Though thankfully, the story did have a happy ending, a phenomenon that is sadly all too rare when exploring the dark corners of the internet. Oh, shit, did she get paid? 
It gets about to buy that and dog got out in, in three months. There ain't no happy in there. Hell, like, no, a dog almost killed me. And, and, and get out in three months? Shit, happy my ass. Hey, hold up, hold up, Judge. Hold up, wait, what the fuck? I'll leave all the uh, links to his sponsor in my description as well. It's completely free. That's nordvpn.com slash Crowley. If we miss a step in the rigging process, things could go seriously wrong. The first step to preventing accidents is preparation. Let's begin by taking a close look at... In recent years, the popularity of live streaming has seemingly reached an all-time high, as it allows the audience to interact with their favorite creators in a uniquely intimate way. But with any content like this, there always lies a dark side, as unpredictable events can interrupt the live stream at any moment. <laughs> Unsurprisingly, this has led right. to countless compilations Shit. and clips throughout the web, careful, documenting dog. the many disturbing oh, this one was crazy. I ain't gonna lie. When he walked up on dog and he was still trying to read that note, boy, I'm mean, in that bitch. <laughs> oh, man, that shit was crazy. I was like, boy, ain't no way in hell I'm going to read that note. Then, uh, uh, this is... Okay. Gotta be careful, man. Unsurprisingly, this has led to countless compilations and Unsurprisingly, this has led to countless compilations Ladies. and clips throughout the web, documenting the many disturbing moments that have happened when creators go live. And of these endless examples, a few have always stood out to me. In the year 2021, a 23-year-old named Chao Quimi had been building a following on the social media site Douyin, the Chinese version of what many of us know today as TikTok, which will actually be featured in the remainder of today's cases. She would post numerous videos and live streams, helping build her follower count to over 100,000 people. It was a more than respectable number, and though she wasn't the most famous person on the platform by any means, many believed that she was well on her way to internet stardom. But before she could get there, she knew that she had to keep a stable job and establish some sort of income, as she was already in the process of building her family, being the mother of two young children. And so she would spend her days working as a crane operator, assisting in Damn. numerous construction projects and earning herself a decent wage, as it wasn't a job My bad. That, <laughs> that, that took a spin. Oh, that's a damn, a damn job for, for her. Oh my God, you say a woman can't... Yeah, I did not expect that. I ain't gonna lie to you. Numerous construction projects and earning herself a decent wage family, being the mother of two young children. And so she would spend her days working as a crane operator, shit, assisting in did. numerous <laughs> construction projects and Dang. earning herself a decent wage, as it wasn't a job that most would sign up for. The cranes that Chow was often tasked with operating often stood hundreds and even thousands of feet in the air. It certainly wasn't a job for the faint of heart, but Chow seemingly embraced the challenge and in many ways used her unique skill set to her advantage. So I wasn't tripping. It, it wasn't that it was just a normal job like how I go in and just work tech support. It wasn't that that was a strange situation. I know it wasn't tripping. Embraced the challenge like a block and in many cheese. ways job for the faint of heart. But Chow seemingly embraced the challenge and in many ways used her unique skill set to her advantage as she would often document her life as a crane operator on Douyin with these videos along with her dancing content being responsible for the majority of her viewership. Oh, okay. And by the summer of 2021, Chow would begin not only making videos while at work but she would also begin live streaming right from her job. And on July 20th, 2021, when her workday began to wind down, she would once again fire up her stream. The full version of this stream doesn't appear to be available anywhere online today. And rather, we only have a roughly two minute clip from that day, with the video starting in silence, as Chow had been singing along to copyrighted music while inside the small cab of her massive crane, sitting 160 feet in the air. Says cab of her massive crane sitting 160 feet in the air. Six. 
She would then set her phone down with the camera still rolling as the viewers began flocking to the stream, loving every second of it. Or at least they were, until the footage cut to this. Though the exact moment has been cut from this video, likely out of respect for Chow, as she was streaming 16 stories in the sky, Chow finishes dancing Did and begins fall? to walk down the steps of the crane until she slips, causing her to free fall all the way to the ground with her phone supposedly still in hand. On her way down, she seems to strike metal bar after metal bar from the crane Damn. until she finally hit the ground below, killing her instantly with her phone still recording. I just can't even imagine being one of the viewers in that live stream and watching that very moment that she begins to fall. And ultimately, I think it's a good thing that the actual footage of her slipping has essentially been wiped from the internet, as even with the missing frames, this is truly one of the most disturbing live stream accidents that I have ever Damn. seen. An accident that showcased the brutal end of a rising star take. And the crazy part is, I was warning, I was like, I wonder if that's why her views are going up good because of the way she's doing her video. She's climbing all the way up there when she's at work and put on that show so everyone's aware of what she's doing. So at that point, that made me think like, all right, so that means, yeah, there, they were, there were people there actually watching and waiting for that to happen. Stop playing. It was people watching, waiting for that shit to happen. And some people just watching, just enjoying it. Her slipping has essentially been wiped from the internet, as even with the missing frames, this is truly one of the most disturbing live stream accidents Damn, that I have ever peace. seen. An accident that showcased the brutal end of a rising star taken too soon. Damn. And throughout the history of the Douyin platform, she's far from the only one. See, it's not so hard after all. Once you get the hang of it, it can be easy to rig a load safely. Raid hunts bugs down like radar. Attacks roaches and ants as they crawl. And kills them dead. Lu Chao Mao Mao Zi was also a young creator on the Douyin site, focusing most of her content on the latest fashion trends, with her videos helping her to amass a following of over 600,000 people, making her a full-on celebrity on the platform. It's a type of virality that so many people in our world desire, but this also comes with a downside. With so many eyes on you, the criticism and hatred lobbied your way on a daily basis is often overwhelming, and for many, it can be too much to bear. Yeah, that's why I tell you, you gotta have thick skin, you jump on here, you gotta be ready for whatever, dog. And for Lou, it's crazy how, because legit, when we, that's what we do. We jump on here, we put our life behind us, ish, and I see YouTubers go through it all the time, end up arguing with everybody out there, they fans, other people fans, freaking other creators, whatever, because it's like, yo, it's like, no, your life is now my life, and I'm about to push my beliefs on you, and you better do this all X, Y, Z, and it's just start going left. Like, oh, shit, and everybody who loved you, just be there watching it, like, oh, can't wait to see dog lose. You better, hey, come back up, though. So many eyes on you, the criticism and hatred lobbied your way on a daily basis is often overwhelming, and for many, it can be too much to bear. And for Lou, this fame ultimately came at the cost of her own mental sanity. Mm. Even before her rise Damn, to prominence, man, them be the oh, wait, I forgot I was about to say this about to turn to one of them Nick Crowley stories. <laughs> but we on Nick Crowley. <laughs> now, I ain't gonna lie to you, you wanna hear some honest shit, dog? I do be watching some YouTubers and I be, I be like, this motherfucker gonna fold. There was one I was watching, I ain't gonna say shit. I was like, yo, I'm a fan, but the way this shit going, this person about to go, they about to go sour physically and mentally. Boy, that shit started going down. And I was like, damn, I couldn't help but to watch. Like At the same time, it's like I wanted to stop. I was like, I want to get away from all like, this bullish. I don't want to be the person that's still adding views to this shit, even though I like, I don't, I don't dislike shit. But I ain't gonna like it if, if it's some ish. I ain't, gonna, I ain't gonna like it neither. But it's like, I, I should stop. But it's like every night, I was like, let me see what's going on. Let me see what's going on. And it was to the point where other people start uploading about this person. I ain't, I know you wait like, boy, say name. No, I ain't gonna say nothing, dog. Because this for real. And, and luckily, this person is still alive, though. But man, this shit started going sour. And they are someone who picked themselves up to came back up. I was like, this shit. Nigga, I'm talking about Boogie, dog. That was my nigga. I used to watch the shit out, Boogie, man. But I ain't gonna lie. When that shit started going sour, 
I was watching it. I was like, I knew it was coming. And it's crazy because we always hear people say, don't let the fame go to your head for people who want to chase this dream or whatever. And it's like, you would think, me, I ain't going to lie, I still want to sit back and look at it and think like, man, all that money, they got to be happy. I'm just being honest with you. Still look at it like that, even though you always hear like, oh, that's not it, blah, blah, blah. We ain't going to get into all that, whatever, right? Basically, what I'm saying is um, when people go sour mentally, it always scares me because I always wonder, like, how do you get there? Like, I would think by so many people loving me, by me having all this money, by me having all this attention, I would think, like, oh, this is great. I'm the best ever. And I know for a lot of people, it doesn't work that way. But it always, within those things, it's like, man, so what happened in between that made this person just like, check out. Me personally, though, all jokes aside, let me get back to the video. This is the only long rant. What I look at it a lot of time is, it's usually people like this who chase this shit the hardest, like where it's everything to them. So when they do get that little bit of attention that's a little bad, I do feel like those are the kind of people where it's like they'll easily check out because they're so focused on this. It's like, oh my gosh, I can't believe people are not liking me, X, Y, Z, blah, 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 blah. Like, hey, it, as long as you did what you really believe, nigga, stand on your 10, your, I'm about to say your 10 feet, your 10 toes, dog, stand up. You be good, fight through that ish. Keep going, you bounce back. Celebrity on the platform. Right, no more long stops. It's a type of virality that so many people in our world desire, but this also comes with a downside. With so many eyes on you, the criticism and hatred lobbied your way on a daily basis is often overwhelming, and for many, it can be too much to bear. And for Lou, this fame ultimately came at the cost of her own mental sanity. Even before her rise to prominence, Lou had long since struggled with severe depression. And now, given the rise of what her family described as constant online harassment, this depression would only worsen by the day. By August of 2021, things had gotten so bad for Lou that her family began to fear that she may try and harm herself and decided to place her in a psychiatric hospital with the hopes that there, she would be safe and hopefully overcome her personal demons. And for a while, that's exactly what she would do. As she supposedly began making serious strides in her mental health. I really hope social media do not eat my kids up. I really do. Do. As she supposedly began making serious strides in her mental health. Though once released, her progress would again diminish. As she would fall back into creating content. With the online harassment only growing worse and worse, the more her account grew. Which leads us to October 14th, 2021. On top of dealing with the stress associated with online fame, Lou would also have to deal with a breakup between her and her longtime boyfriend. Something that would cause her already collapsing mental health to completely plummet. And so that day, she would take to Douyin and post a cryptic video stating that this may be the last time she ever interacts with her audience. With the clip being titled, This is probably the last video. Thank you for following along. <laughs> I think I heard about her. I think I know. It is an incredibly worrisome oh, video. Wait. As given Because I think when I was first getting into K pop, a lot of people kept telling me about this girl. Is this her? Because I remember a lot of people, y'all were also saying, like, once her boyfriend broke up with her, that was like the one that really pushed it over the edge. And. Uh, now I'm thinking of something else also. Gosh. <laughs> It is an incredibly worrisome video. As given her complex history with depression, viewers grew worried that she was alluding to taking her own life, with some questioning what she had in store for this supposed live stream, or if it would even happen at all. But sure enough, as promised, that same night, Lou would go live and reveal her plan. As the stream starts, Lou is sitting in front of a camera, echoing the sentiment of her previous video, and expressing how truly sad she was, before she shifted the conversation to ending her life. As viewers began clicking on her stream, Lou explains how she had purchased liquid pesticide from the store, which was said to be highly toxic, as a single sip was capable of causing death. And not only did she buy this, Dang. but she also explained how she planned to drink it right there on stream before asking her viewers what they thought. By this point, her stream had already amassed over 1,200 viewers, many of whom being supposed fans of the young woman, who clearly was in desperate need of help. But rather than helping talk her out of this, 
The live chat instead began to turn on her. Looking at still images pulled from the stream, Ooh. the majority of her comments read things like, drink, 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 or drink if you want to. And even more nefariously, other users would write, drink up, fatty, and prove that you have depression in front of this many people. Drink the pesticide. It's unclear what Lou's true intentions were when starting the stream, but many believe that this was simply done as a call for help, with one of her own friends even stating that this was only done as a way of attracting her ex-boyfriend's attention, and that she never actually intended on taking her own life. But seeing the way that her chat had turned on her, and hearing the demands that she drink the pesticide, only fueled her spiraling mental health. Damn. And so, in an instant, Lou grabbed the bottle. I said, fuck y'all, I turned the shit off. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Drinking old long head ass nigga. That's blood, that really made me not do it. I'm like, oh, hell no. I'm up here trying to get some sympathy. These niggas, oh, hell, uh, uh. I'm about to go. I ain't got my weed left. spiraling mental health. And so, in an instant, Lou grabbed the bottle and began to chug. Following Damn. this, Lou puts the jug down and makes a remark stating, that was hard to drink. Before the poison seemingly begins to take effect, the stream then ends as Lou clutches her throat and stops the video. With the live stream over, Lou immediately began to regret her decision, as she would quickly grab her phone and call an ambulance. However, it was much too late, and sadly, she would lose her life, thanks in large part to the encouragement from her very own audience. It's a horrible story, but somehow it actually gets darker from here, as it actually has one of the most shocking twists has one of the most shocking twists that I have personally ever seen in a case before. Following her passing, Lou's body would be quickly cremated with a funeral planned shortly after, so her loved ones could pay their respects. Though something strange happened before the ceremony could commence, as the ashes of Lou would disappear. Apparently, the crematorium had refused to turn over Lou's ashes to her family, claiming that somehow they had gotten lost. Though in actuality, an investigation would reveal that these remains had actually been stolen, and stolen by okay. none other than the employees responsible for her cremation. They gonna sell them. According to reports, numerous members of the staff had taken the remains of Lou with the intention of selling them on the black market. As once news broke of her passing, the agency was contacted by an individual expressing interest in purchasing Dang. her cremated remains. And what did this man have planned once in possession of these ashes? Well, he wanted to marry them. In certain areas of China, there exists a practice called ghost marriages, where people are allowed to marry after death. This is done due to the fact that unmarried girls are seen as undesirable in their society and can even be shameful for the parents, so some will choose to marry the deceased individuals as a way of supposedly saving their souls and their families from this shame. It's a bizarre tradition that typically happens between people who at the very least knew each other, but it's especially twisted when it's done without any form of consent from the victim or her family, as this man was a complete stranger to the girl. Though thankfully, this plan would eventually fall through when the buyer supposedly backed out and the operation would eventually be busted, leading to Lou's remains being found and safely returned to her family. And it's this family that I truly feel sorry for the most in this situation, as not only did they have to deal with the highly publicized passing of their daughter in such a horrific way, but also the theft and almost the marriage of her remains. Damn. You read it away. I agree. Let's turn now to China, where the Winter Olympics are underway in Beijing. China's human rights abuses are getting as much attention as the athletes. Shit. I'm gonna let the ad play real quick. I ain't got no more weed, uh, boy. China's human rights abuses are getting as much attention as the athletes. Our final case once again takes us back to the Douyin app and a small impoverished village within Shuzhou, China. 
There, a man named Dong Moomin had been living with his family of eight children, seven boys and one girl, a dynamic that was extremely unusual to say the least, as China had only just recently gotten rid of its one-child policy, yet somehow Dong had found a workaround and managed to grow this family all of his own. Even more surprising was the fact that Dong actually lived in destitute poverty, hardly earning enough to take care of himself, let alone this big family. Yet somehow he found a way for himself and his children to survive. And not just survive, but seemingly thrive, as Dong always seemed to have a smile on his face, and his family remained positive and full of joy despite their circumstances. To the locals, his story was incredibly touching, and soon enough, this story would begin to spread to the rest of the world, as Dong began to document his life on Douyin, where he ran the aptly named Father of Eight page, which most would view as extremely inspirational given his positive outlook and the love he had for his family. Soon enough, his videos began being viewed by thousands of people, growing his account to 600,000 followers in the span of just That's a few a uploads. And before long, Dong had become a full-on small-town celebrity, with other influencers traveling to the region to interview him, as well as to help him set up ways for his audience to donate to his family. This exposure and outside help led to a brand new stream of income, as well as a seemingly endless supply of donations for his children, who would receive such a staggering amount of gifted clothes that it quite literally filled up an entire section of his already small home. The whole ordeal was undeniably touching, and among the many influencers to help make these donations happen was an account called Shujo Brother Yiksu, a man who had visited Dong and his family on multiple occasions. And on one particular day in late January of 2021, he would once again show up unannounced to the home of Dong for another routine visit. And it was on this visit that everything changed. Upon being let into Dong's forgot we was watching a damn Nicole video. I'm sitting here smiling. Everything changed. Upon being let into Dong's home, the man behind the Shujo Brother Yiksu account, who I'll now be referring to simply as Shujo, as I was unable to find his actual name, would begin interviewing one of Dong's many sons, who mentioned something unusual. Holding what appeared to be food in his hand, the child mentions how he and his brothers were often tasked with feeding their mother, who lived out back. This was a bizarre statement from the child, as after all of Shujo's visits, he had never once seen a mother figure. And up until this point, most had just assumed that she was out of the picture. And so, confused, Shujo asked the boy to take them to their mother, to which he was promptly led to a small hut behind the house so with his camera cap, drawn. Though and just keep creating babies. To which he was promptly led to a small hut behind the no, house I'm, I'm with his camera drawn. Assuming. Inside the dilapidated hut, Shujo would find a disheveled woman with a chain around her neck, attached to the wall and sealed by a padlock. The woman herself looked scared, frail, and was noticeably freezing, as that winter day when the video was filmed had been particularly cold. The woman was not only without a jacket, but without shoes, barefoot, and shivering in the corner of the room. The majority of her words were barely discernible, as she seemed completely disconnected from the world around her, with the only understandable statement she could manage to make being how she was kept there like a prostitute. <laughs> In all the videos posted by and about oh, Dong, that. this was the first time his wife and the mother of his children was shown on camera. Immediately, the clip would spread across China, prompting concern well, for the like woman, my shit as given the optics alone, many- Whole time, I'm clapping for Dog. 
Uh, I should have known. I, I, cause I, this is the second time I forgot I was watching a damn Nick Crowley video. This children was shown on camera. Immediately, the clip would spread across China, prompting concern for the chained woman. As given the optics alone, many fear that she may be a victim of human trafficking, and that Dong, this supposedly wholesome figure on the Douyin app, may have actually been using her for the sole purpose of bearing children. Man, In response to the allegations, Dong came forward and admitted that the woman, whose surname was Yang, was in fact his wife, but that she suffered from debilitating mental health issues. And due to this, he claimed that Yang would often lose control and attempt to hurt those around her, including her children. And so, for their safety, she was kept chained up in a hut outside of the house. And this was a sentiment echoed by officials in the area, as a statement would quickly be made by law enforcement, stating, Her family has been given further assistance to ensure they have a warm Lunar New Year. Despite this quick response, however, the public largely doubted the story that Dong and the authorities had been telling, as regardless of its validity, the way this woman was being kept is clearly just inhumane. And things would only get more suspicious from here, as people attempted to dig deeper. For starters, many would visit the region to try and assist Yang and hopefully save her from this neglect, only to discover that Chinese authorities had actually closed off the entire town in which Dong's family had lived, making access to them impossible. Along with this, journalists who had written about the incident were also supposedly arrested. Along with the actual owner of the Shuzhou Brother Ixu account, and two other influencers who had attempted to help Yang, it seemed clear that China was attempting to fully censor this whole ordeal. And for good reason too, as this video was released just days before the start of the already controversial Winter Olympic Games, which just so happened to be taking place in, in China. China. But as hard as they tried to suppress this, the story of the chained woman had already spread far across the world, even on one day being mentioned across social media more so than the actual Olympics themselves. And in the face of intense international scrutiny, the truth would finally be revealed. In actuality, this lady's name isn't even Yang, and instead it was Chao Humami. And sadly, she had in fact been the victim of human trafficking. In 1996, when Chao was just 20 years old, she was taken to a mental health clinic where somehow she would end up being sold into a trafficking ring. Damn. From there, she was bought and sold on three separate occasions, with one of her buyers being Dong's father. Once purchased, Dong would marry the woman and essentially use her as a means of birthing children. And it was within that backyard hut that Dong would often leave this starved and freezing woman, chained up like an animal, with no chance to leave, and only I using her when it would come time to have another child. And as for her violent Damn, outbursts, well, that's she sat in there pregnant and everything, dog. Come time oh to have another gosh. child. And as for her violent outbursts, well that too was a fabrication by Dong, as it would later be revealed that she was actually suffering from a seizure disorder, and each time she would have one, Dong would punish her by chaining her up. Not because she was dangerous or anything like that, but because she was an inconvenience. The whole situation is unbelievably horrible, and truthfully, I can't even imagine the horrors that this poor woman has endured. And without this massive public pressure, it's likely she would have lived the rest of her life as a captive woman. Though thankfully, this doesn't appear to be the case, as it's believed that she has now finally been rescued and is being given the proper care that she deserved all along. While Dong and multiple others involved in her trafficking have since been arrested, leading to an extremely shocking and heinous end to a man once considered one of Douyin's most wholesome creators. Oh. Though there's one last element to this story, Damn, an element that totally- I legit watch it, dog. Like, oh, look how- it, yeah, Cause I ain't gonna lie, yeah, food the shit out of me. Watch, like, look how amazing this looks. See, that's our father. I'm telling you, look. Oh, he made a way for all eight of them. Oh, that's um, BS. Like, what? I mean, it's good kids were taken care of, but I mean... Send to Damn, a man once considered I mean, one of Douyin's most wholesome creators. People donating shit. Though there's one last element to this story, an mm. element that totally takes away from this somewhat positive ending, with that being that Xiao wasn't the only captive woman in that village. 
Oh, in a village, Earlier I, I had mentioned that the Shujo Brother Yixu account had been banned with its owner having been arrested. And though this was primarily due to the expose on Dong, he would also release another video directly before his ban that showed that Xiao wasn't alone. In that very same small village, just a few houses down, Shujo would discover this. <laughs> Unlike the chained woman's story, this video would garner just a fraction of the attention, but is equally as alarming, as this woman, whose surname is Zong, had too been purchased many years ago by her now husband, and it seems that she is somehow treated even worse than Chao, as she had supposedly been beaten consistently throughout the early years of their relationship, leaving her too with severe mental issues, potentially caused by head trauma. And to make things even worse, she has lived like this on the floor of that hut on her knees, unable to walk or stand for 20 years. Just Damn. left there to essentially waste away, unable to even move enough to make it to the bed that sits so tantalizingly close. There's just something so incredibly disturbing about this video in particular, Man, and unfortunately yeah, I couldn't dog. find any more information on it, with the only real detail being that the case was quote-unquote under investigation. But sadly, I have no idea what ended up happening to Zong since then. But I do hope that they are giving her the proper care and putting measures in place to protect any others like her and Chao, as given that these two cases happen so close to each other in one small village, I have a bad feeling that they aren't the only ones. Man, Nick Crow, if you I want to give a huge shout out to oh, my God tier patron members. I about Alexander Duran, America's Grand Uncle, the Zoo 42 Biznack. Damn, legs that fell asleep. Boy, I gotta get up and stretch real quick. I ain't gonna lie, this was an effed up video, dog. Every freaking story, dog. And the first one, oh, that one. What a freaking opener, man. I was like, that one could have easily been avoided just by doing your job. But hey, it's always easy to sit back and wait for a situation. But damn, that one, I was like, I just wasn't understanding. I was like, I just felt like it was a little more to, to the story. Or maybe, nah, that was, that's it. Hey, just like, no, nah, we heard about a pedestrian. We know you're doing 110 in this motherfucker. I mean, in this mug at 50 and a 50. But we gotta get this pedestrian. And then this person's been, I guess, for a week straight was a pedestrian that mom was still out there I, I think the person's living out there i don't know what's going on i don't know dog but look i'm about to go ahead and get up out of here and enjoy my day you go ahead and do the same thing enjoy your day morning evening night whenever you're watching this video hey click that like button for me i appreciate it blah but i'm out